okay? A pleasant day to everyone. Our subject, Life and Works of Rizal, concerns about the uh, biography, lifestyle, and creations of Jose Rizal, and many more informations about our national hero. Last time, we tackled the Rizal law, social origins, Rizal in Europe, propaganda, and the Noli Metanghere. And this time, we will discuss the topic that is all about Rizal's Morga and the search for origin, featuring the uh, uh, illustrative views of Rizal about the Preconquest past. But before discussing this topic, I am Ismail Ulep, together with Mr. Justin Alivio and Miss Angelica Tabal, will be your presenters for this tutorial video. And I hope that you will discover things, learn some information, and enjoy this video. What is Morga? Let us first discuss who is Morga and also his works and views. Antonio de Morga Sanchez Garay was a Spanish soldier, lawyer and high-ranking colonial official for 40 years in the Philippines, New Spain, and Peru, where he was president of the Real Audiencia for 20 years. He was also a historian who wrote the successes of Las Islas Filipinas. This means that Morga is a great leader as he served for 43 long years. It is said also that he is a historian. So let us discover his greatest writings in the Philippines, the successes de las Islas Filipinas. So let us first define what is successes. What is Las Islas Filipinas? Successus is an event, happenings or occurrence on the work of an honest observer, a versatile bureaucrat who knew the workings of the administration from the inside. Las Islas Filipinas means the islands of the Philippines. The Philippines was named in honor of King Philip II of Spain. So, Successus de las Islas Filipinas is an event or occurrence in the island of the Philippines. Let us discover more on the next presentation. Successos de las Islas Filipinas, or in English, Events in the Philippine Island, is a book written and published by Antonio de Morga, considered as one of the most important works on the early history of Spanish colonization of the Philippines. It was published in 1609 after he was reassigned to Mexico in two volumes by Casa de Jerónimo Valley in Mexico City. The first English translation was published in London in 1868 and another English translation by Blair and Robertson was published in Cleveland in 1907. So this book contains the history of the Philippines. It is important as it records what our natives do on the time. One of the first books ever to tackle Philippine history. Book that described the events inside and outside of the country from 1493 to 1603, including the history of the Philippines, consists of eight chapters. Discuss the political, social, and economic aspects of the colonizer and the colonized country. Based on documentary research, observation, and personal experience of Morgan, Rizal is secondary source of the book due to his annotation. And now, we learn the successes de las Islas Filipinas and let us know why Rizal annotate this book and how he changes his mind or how he changes his thoughts about this book where annotation is a written explanation or observation etc that is added to a book how Rizal discovered this book 
the discovery of Morga Successus de las Islas Filipinas proved to be serendipitous to Rizal. He had been rethinking the idea of the Filipino not as a people who were equal to their Spanish colonizers, but a people with a unique civilization that was destroyed by colonization. Rizal found the answer to his idea in Morga's book, and it was this work that he decided to reprint with his annotations. Serendipitous means it is a good luck or a good chance. Rizal considered this book as a lucky thing of his discoveries. This leads to his annotations. Jose Rizal rewrote the Philippine history of his time with what has now been considered as his second major work. The Morga annotations provided the seeds of the idea of how the Filipinos should view themselves amidst a growing nationalism that eventually led to the formation of a nation. By publishing his annotated version of the Morga's Successos de las Islas Filipinas, or the events of the Philippine Islands originally published in 1609, his annotations included clarifications and amplifications of details, refutations of statements where necessary and confirmations when checked against other sources. This means that Rizal is not only making comments on the book but also making clarifications, develop information, and as well as opposing what the book tells. And this time, let us witness some criticisms of Rizal on Morgus view in the book Successos de las Islas Filipinas. Number 1 The fish that Marga mentions that cannot be good until it begins to rot is bagoong. Salted and fermented fish or shrimp paste used as a sauce in Filipino cuisine. And those who have eaten it and taste it know that it neither is nor should be rotten. So, Rizal criticized Morga for writing rotten fish rather than saying bagoong. Bagoong can only be found in the Philippines, those preconquest past. Western unfamiliarity with bagoong is a fun. They called our unique sauce as a exotic dish, as Morga said that fish has started to rot and stink. Rizal also said that this is another preoccupation of the Spaniards who, like other nations, treat food to which they are not accustomed or is unknown to them with disgust. Number 2 Christianity was a weapon for facilitating the political and economic subjugations of the native. In Morgus' views, Christianity creates peace. But in result, he said that it is a weapon to conquer the nation or to conquer the Philippines. Number 3. Rizal noticed all Morgan's mistakes. Morga misspelled many native names of places, flora and fauna, and other social classes, which Rizal corrected. This proves that Rizal is genius as he notices those mistakes. Rizal emphasized that the native women, unlike their European counterparts, never lost their noble titles. It was the groom who gave dowry to the parents because they're going to lose their precious daughter. Rizal want to elaborate the uh, differences of Europeans to our ancestors. He retells what is the dowry meaning. Number 5. Rizal clarified that Morga must have meant sinamay, which was woven from abaca thread that comes from the banana trunks, not from the leaves. Morga said in his book that abaca comes from the uh, banana leaves, and it is not true, because Rizal corrected it by saying it comes from banana trunks. Morga is not factual in this scenario. Before going to the propositions of Rizal to the preconquest past, let us first uh, 
um, know what are the intentions in these views and what is his thoughts in these views. First, to provide the Filipino people their early history, a pre-Spanish history. Rizal aims to be uh, factual and to provide us a simple and honest history. Second, to present to the people their authentic culture and identity. In this, Rizal wants to elaborate our culture, tradition, and belief as a Filipino. Third and the last, to invoke the testimony of the illustrious Spaniards to govern the destinies of the Philippines in the beginning of her new era and witness the last moments of our ancient nationality. Rizal criticized the notions of some Spaniards about the Philippines in the Preconquest past. And this time, let us discover the Rizal's three propositions about his illustrado views. Rizal's three propositions. First, the people of the Philippines have the culture of their own before the coming of Spaniards. This is true because Philippines before have their own beliefs as they created tribes and clans. Second, Filipinos were decimated, demoralized, exploited, and ruined by the Spanish colonization. Rizal wants to make Filipinos mind that Spaniards destroy our culture back then at the Preconquest times. Last, the present state of the Philippines was not necessarily superior to its past. Um, Rizal makes comparison what is really happening when he wrote his views compared to the past. Preconquest past or Preconquest times is peaceful and yet when Spaniards came to the land, many wars, many conflicts arrived. So let's go to the importance of Rizal's annotation to the present generation. Number one, to awaken the consciousness of us as a Filipino in our past. Number two, to devote ourselves in studying the future. Number three, to first lay bear the past in order to better judge the present and to survey the road trodden during three centuries. Number four, to prove Filipinos had a culture of their own prior to colonization, that the Filipinos were not inferior to the white man. Number five, to shatter the myth of so-called indolence of Filipinos. Number six, to reduce those Filipinos who denied their native tongue into rotten fish. Number seven, to seriously study Tagalog and produce a comprehensive Tagalog dictionary. Number eight, to embrace the generic term Injo, or in today's case, Filipino with all its negative connotations and turn it into one of dignity and nobility. Okay guys, this is the end of our report. So hope you gain some information, discover many knowledge and um, enjoy the uh, results morga and the uh, search for origin. To end with, I am Ismail Ulep together with my group mates. Ms. Angelica Tabal and Mr. Jestony Alipio, your presenters for today's report. And I say thank you for watching and enjoy the life and works of Riza. Thank you very much.